Hey there, this is Elizabeth, the teaching artist for the Timken Museum of Art with another art tutorial for you. In today's lesson, we are going to take a trip on a hot air balloon and learn more about mixing colors to give the illusion of depth in a picture. The art materials you will need are pictured here, colored pencils, a ruler, pencil, and paper. In addition, you can download the two images we're using for references at the links provided on these two slides. In today's project, we will be using two different photo references to help us create our picture. However, we will not be copying them exactly, we'll just be inspired by them for ideas. All right, let's get started. The first thing I need you to do is to orient your paper portrait, measure up one inch from the bottom of the paper, and draw me a horizon line. We will be using this tree sunset picture for our background sky as well as the background hills and the ground. So what I need you to do is to draw these hills in the background very close to the horizon line with curved overlapping lines that take the form of really narrow triangles. Okay, for the next step, you can either trace the hot air balloon or draw it freehand. The first way I'm going to show you is the tracing method. You need to cover the back of the picture with your pencil, coloring in behind the hot air balloon itself. Then you flip it back over, place it where you want it to be on your paper, and trace it. It is not necessary to copy the exact design on the hot air balloon picture. In my example, I only used part of what I was seeing in the design and reinterpreted it to be bands of horizontal color going across the balloon. You can do pieces and parts of the design from the picture, create your own design. It's totally up to you. Now, when I'm doing these horizontal lines, if you do choose to use horizontal lines in your picture, notice how I'm doing the ridges. We need those ridges to give the depth of the balloon. And then no matter what your design is, please create these vertical curved lines that I'm drawing right now to give us the depth of the balloon in the drawing. We need those curved vertical lines. Now you just go in and do a little correcting where you need to. You don't have to redraw the entire balloon if you can see it because you're going to use color. Now, if you want to freehand the balloon, I need you to draw me a round trapezoid with an oval at the bottom and then three diagonal lines that come off that oval and meet an upside down L shape. Then from that L shape, you're going to draw three more diagonal lines that will meet to a cube. Make sure we see the underneath of the cube because we're viewing it from below. Next, draw a center line that reaches up to as high as you want the hot air balloon to be, and then begin the curve. Now the curve will take a few passes. Just don't press down too hard, and make sure to look at the photo to see the basic shape of the hot air balloon. Don't guess at it, just look at the reference. It'll take a few tries and then you'll be able to erase away any unwanted lines. Next, I want you to make five hatch marks starting at the top of the balloon and moving five hatch marks to the left, five hatch marks to the right, and then make one hatch mark in the center. From those hatch marks, you are going to draw those curved vertical lines that you see, the creases in the balloon. You'll start at the top, curve around the balloon, and narrow as it comes down to the bottom of the balloon. Next, I created three horizontal bands going around the hot air balloon. I did not follow the reference on the pattern for the balloon. You are free to copy exactly as I do, or choose a different kind of pattern. I chose to create three bands, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and one at the top. All right, now it's time for the color. We're going to use this reference for the sky, mountains, and ground. So to start, I want you to use a light blue for the upper part of the sky. You'll press down harder on it towards the top of the page 
and you'll let up on the pressure on the pencil as you move down the page towards the center of the page. We want a gradation of blue, darker to lighter. So again, don't push down as hard in the areas that you want it to be light so the white of the paper shows through. And then up towards the top, the blue will be a little richer, so you're going to push down a little harder on the pencil. Next, I want you to go for your red pencil and make a thin veil of the red in the lower part of the sky. So you're just not going to press down very hard and you're putting a light layer of red. This red is a buffer for the blue to the yellow and the blue to the orange. After the red, then I want you to overlap it with the orange. Same thing where you put a very light layer. If you look to the reference on your right, you're going to see how there's a little bit more warmth in the sky. It has a little bit of a glow to it. That's what we're going for right now. After the orange comes the yellow. So the yellow, you will also do a light veil of the color, but you'll get richer with it as it moves closer to the horizon. You're going to notice again in that picture that you can see a little bit more yellow in the bottom right of the sky and over across the center to a little bit on the left side of the lower part of the sky. So we are using these references as an inspiration. You do not have to match them perfectly, but by following a reference, you can get an idea of how nature works, how lighting works. So that's what we're going for here. So like always, err on the side of too light, it's always easier to get darker. Now, on top of all of that yellow, orange, and red, you are now going to use your white colored pencil across all of it. That white pencil will blend it all together and harmonize the color. Now you'll see that I've gone back up to add another layer of blue up top. So again, you're bringing this picture into focus slowly with layers. You don't get to where you want to go in the first pass. Now, moving down to the mountains in the background, you're going to go ahead and use that same light blue on all of those little hills. Then you're going to take a light green and go over the hills on the left, and then the hills on the right, the center one, you're going to make mostly that sky blue with a tiny bit of that green, and then the hill on the far right is going to get the blue and the green. It's a darker blue with the darker green. And then go ahead and use that dark green at the base of the hills on the ground as well as into the hill on the left. All right, now for the ground, I want you to use the light green in the far back underneath the hills, then move to yellow in the middle ground overlapping slightly that green. And then I want you to take a little bit of that orange towards the foreground and then the dark green. So we're creating a transition from the background to the foreground with the color to help us give that illusion of depth. If we use only one color for the entire ground, it's going to look flat. So dark green and brown in the foreground and orange with yellow and yellow green in the midground and background. Next, you're gonna go back into the sky and enhance the yellow and the orange to make it a little bit richer and hotter. And then go ahead and add a little bit more red over the top. Remember you can use the white to help colors start to blend and transition into each other. Next we're going to go for the lower part of the hot air balloon using the brown to color in the rounded trapezoid and then use black for the oval but don't color in the oval too dark. Use a light touch. And then next, go ahead and redraw the basket using the black. You could also use brown if you'd like to. And then we're going to color it in. We'll have a shadow side and a light side. First, we're gonna add the light side of the orange for the rounded trapezoid at the top of the basket. And now we're going for the brown for the shadowed side of the cube and the bottom of the cube. The bottom of the cube is going to get black and brown. The side just got brown. The front then is going to get yellow with a little brown on it. 
All right, moving on to the balloon itself, we are going to color in the bands first. So go ahead and redraw them with the color you choose. And then next, you will be shading the creases of each one of those vertical curves that you drew. By shading next to each one of those creases, you will give the illusion of depth because they recess in at the crease and then are blown out at the top of the curve of each one of those segments. When it comes time to fill in the lighter areas of each one of those segments, you'll use the same color, just don't press down as hard. For the next band of color, I chose purple, and I will repeat the same process I just did with the red. Outline it, and then shade at the creases a little bit darker, and fill in the lighter areas with a lighter touch with the purple. And then for the third band, I chose green, and I will follow the exact same process. For some definition, go ahead and take your black colored pencil and trace over all of those creases. Don't press too hard though, don't make it super, super black. Next, I continue to use the black at the very lower part of the hot air balloon. It's shadowed down there, so I just went ahead and made it a black to a gray. I'm also using the black to darken some of the colors, so the green, the purple, and the red, just to give it a little bit more of a shadow. When we look at the picture of the hot air balloon, you can see that there is a shadow side on the left. I also need to make it a little bit darker down at the bottom of the balloon where it meets the rounded trapezoid. The rest of the balloon I'm going to leave white but because white reflects the colors around it, I'm going to be using the exact same colors in the sky for the white in the balloon. So the blue will definitely be the shadowed side and it will also work in all of the creases. So use the blue for the dark value of the white. Then you're going to use the yellow and the orange as reflected light skimming atop the lighter areas of the balloon where the light is hitting the most. You will also be finding some of that orange and yellow and red throughout the whole balloon because you gotta figure those sky colors will be reflecting off it from all angles. In addition, you're gonna find the blue reflecting off the colors, the bands of colors. So put some blue into that purple and then add the straight purple into the shadows. And then for the light areas on the red, please use the orange. We're not going to use white, we're going to use orange with yellow skimming over the top to make it nice and bright. Adding white to it will just turn it pink. All right, we're nearing the finish line. I just need you now to take that light blue and give me another layer in the background behind the balloon on the upper portion and some of the middle portion. And then after that, we just add the people. We don't need a lot of detail, just think stick figure. All right, you did it. You completed another art tutorial. Thank you so much for taking the time to be creative today.